Hi everyone, welcome to this short video on units of analysis. It's sort of like a supplemental video. Um, the question to keep in mind when we're thinking about units of analysis is where the data come from versus what the data are about. So where are the data coming from is not what we're concerned with when, when we're talking about units of analysis. We're interested in what the data are about. But in order to understand what the data are about, we have to, to first kind of um, go through where data come from so that we can ignore it. Okay, where data come from? They can come from uh, verbal reports, like individuals taking a survey or in doing interviews, um, uh, internet surveys. They can come from visual observation, um, actually looking at people's behavior, like when I talked about in the fundamentals of research video in terms of attachment and observing the number of times a mother kisses her child. Data can also come from archival information, like agency records. We've talked about that before as well. So all of this is uh, about the source of information when it comes to where data come from. But what we're interested in, as I said, is what data are about. So all of this is irrelevant to the question of unit of analysis. So what can data be about? They can be about individuals, about individual personal experiences. The key is though that they are about individuals, regardless of where the data are coming from. So, I just said that, does not matter how data were collected or from whom. So let's just look at an example to help. So if I'm interested in substance abuse treatment, I can interview or survey individuals in recovery about their personal experiences in treatment. I can observe individuals in an AA meeting or some other treatment setting and, co and collect data from my observations about individual level experiences in those settings, like if I'm interested in engagement in the process. I can look at agency records to examine individual variables related to outcomes after treatment, like whether gender of the individual makes a difference. None of this matters because this is about where the data come from. What I'm interested in is what the data are about. And they are about personal experiences, individual personal experiences. So that's one unit of analysis, uh, the individual. There's also another unit of analysis called the group. And this is about the experiences of couples, families, or larger groups of people at the group level. For example, social work researchers might be interested in learning more about families, racial or ethnic groups, gender groups, cultural groups, or cohorts of people or generations, like for example, millennials versus baby boomers. Um, but let's take a, a, a look at families. A researcher might be interested in this kind of data. And I made up this data. We're going to pretend it's from the census. It's the average household income by marital status. So we have single, never married, married with a spouse present, married with a spouse absent, widowed, and divorced. The single and never married people are making 50585 on average in terms of their household income compared to the other group. So this is the lowest compared to the other groups of people. This is not to say that a single person uh, individually will make less than a married person. It's not about individuals. These data are about groups based on marital status. I cannot draw conclusions about individual um, people, um, or I shouldn't. And we'll talk about drawing conclusions at the end of this presentation. Okay, so data can be about individuals, data can be about groups, data can be about organizations. These are more formal than groups. Um, they usually have uh, specific goals. They're called organizations because they're more organized. And I'm sorry, I know that's using the term I'm trying to define in the definition, but if it helps, think of it as that they have more 
uh, structure, more uh, formal goals. Examples in, in the, with regard to social work include actual organizations like nonprofit organizations, uh, government agencies like DCFS, uh, Department of Mental Health, etc., religious institutions of interest. But it can also be systems like the education system, the judicial system, the, ch the child welfare system. Um, it can be social movements like Occupy, Black Lives Matter. Okay, the last unit of analysis is uh, what, what are called social artifacts. And these involve media that are created by people. So usually pop culture related, but not always. And, but they do usually involve a content analysis of that media. So whatever we're looking at, we're analyzing it for some purpose. So an example uh, might include news magazines, other examples include movies, lyrics, books, etc. Uh, an example of social research, social work research using artifacts can include um, the following research question. How are welfare recipients portrayed in news articles and how does that contribute to stigma and to underutilization of services? So those are the different uh, units of analysis, and you may be asking yourself, well, why do I need to know this? Um, well, for research purposes, it's important to keep in mind the unit of analysis when it comes time for drawing conclusions from uh, the results of a study, because we want to avoid making errors in reasoning. The two main types of fallacies or errors in reasoning that can happen are uh, called the uh, ecological and reductionist fallacy. So I'll go over each one in turn. The ecological fallacy happens when we draw conclusions or make claims about individuals when the unit of analysis is a group or higher, like an organization or what have you. An example would be, let's say, a study is interested in poverty across different cities in LA and the researcher finds that poverty rates are higher in cities that have large Latino populations. The researcher then concludes that Latinos are more likely to be impoverished. So think about that. The study was about cities. It was about poverty rates across cities. None of the data are about individuals, and yet this researcher has concluded um, uh, something about individuals based on data at a higher unit of analysis. So this conclusion is false. The data were at the group level, the conclusion was at the individual level. The reductionist fallacy is the opposite. Drawing conclusions or making claims about groups or higher units when the unit of analysis is the individual. So for example, a researcher asks individual adults about their level of income along with other demographic variables. So all of this data, these data, are um, at the individual level. The researcher finds that income is lowest among Vietnamese Americans. And uh, you know, my standard disclaimer, I'm making this up. Okay, the researcher concludes that communities with high Vietnamese populations are more likely to be impoverished. So you can see how it's the reverse of the other. Well, this conclusion is also false. The data were at the individual level. The conclusion was at the group level. So all of that to say that the unit of analysis is important because we want to make sure that the conclusions that we are drawing as a result of our research are accurate. And that's it. So here are the sources of images. And I will see you next time. Well, not see you, but you know what I mean.